Please do sit down. As Vice-Chancellor of the University, it is my pleasure to welcome you to this morning's ceremony for the School of Health and Emergency Professions and School of Psychology. May I introduce the platform party and welcome on my right, Mrs. Anne Dunbar, who will receive the honorary degree of a Master of Science. And on my far right, Professor Barry Hunt, Pro Vice-Chancellor International. On my immediate left, Ms. Karen Middleton, who will be receiving the honorary degree of Doctor of Science. And on my far left, Professor Richard Price, Dean of the School of Health and Social Work. May I also particularly welcome all our graduates, their relatives and friends to this morning's ceremony, and of course, our special guests. We shall now proceed with the conferment of awards, and I have pleasure in calling upon Professor Hunt to read the citation for conferment of the honorary award of Master of Science on Mrs. Anne Dunbar. Vice Chancellor, it is my pleasure to present for the award of Honorary Master of Science, Mrs. Anne Dunbar. Medical imaging is at the center of modern healthcare playing an indispensable role in the diagnosis and treatment of disease. As new technology continues to improve techniques and their implementation, there's an ongoing need for innovation in the training of the imaging experts of tomorrow. Anne Barr has experienced many changes during her 30 years in radiology, including the introduction of digital equipment for imaging and demand for services 24-7. As a highly experienced clinician with ex excellent communication skills, she has also played a key role in educating radiographers, particularly in supporting students within the Thames Valley area. Anne qualified in radiography in Lancaster, near where she grew up. Over the next 10 years, she broadened her professional knowledge in both general and specialist areas, holding NHS posts in the Midlands and Wales. After a career break to bring up her two sons, she returned to work in the early 1990s and joined the Oxford University's Hospitals Trust, where she has spent most of her professional life. From 2006 to March of this year, when she retired, she was the radiology manager of the John Radcliffe Hospital in Oxford. That hospital's radiology department is a busy one, providing acute imaging and intervention, as well as support for inpatient medical, surgical, and pediatric specialities. Anne was responsible for the smooth running of the department, which employed over 80 radiographers. And her staff always found her an approachable and caring manager. Anne brought this approach to her role in supporting radiography students, first from the Oxford School of Radiography, as the representative for radiography education for all Oxford hospitals, she became involved with Cranfield University when the contract for the degree training of radiographers transferred there in the 1990s. Our university was awarded this training contract in 2002, and members of staff of our School of Health and Emergency Professions were also able to count on Anne's expertise. In that time, she contributed greatly to the overall development of radiography at our university. During her fulfilling career in the NHS, Anne has made a positive difference to thousands of people living in the Thames Valley area and beyond. One of her most rewarding professional experiences was on an overseas visit with colleagues from John Radcliffe to a medical centre near Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania. There she gave help and advice to radiographers on specific procedures, on setting up a quality assurance programme, 
and on checking and interpreting films. Not only was she greatly encouraged by the interest of the staff and their enthusiasm for learning new techniques, but she also gained a fascinating insight into their daily lives. On her return, a year later, she was able to see progress for herself and suggest further improvements in working methods. Since retiring from her managerial career, Anne continues to be involved with radiography and plans to go back to work part-time at the John Radcliffe Hospital in a clinical role. Anne has shown a tremendous dedication as a manager and as a clinician in the field of radiology over many years. She has also made a significant and sustained contribution to the development of radiography education at our university. Vice-Chancellor, in recognition of this, it is my pleasure to present for the award of Honorary Master of Science, Mrs. Anne Dunbar. I now have pleasure in calling upon Professor Price to read the citation for conferment of an honorary award of Doctor of Science on Ms. Karen Middleton. Vice Chancellor, it is my pleasure to present for the award of honorary Doctor of Science, Karen Middleton, CBE. Karen Middleton is the Chief Health Professions Officer at the Department of Health. Karen heads a team providing strategic leadership and advising on policies, issues and developments affecting the 86,000 allied health professions working in England. Karen brings a strong management track record as an innovator, communicator and motivator to a role as the government's senior advisor in this area. Since being appointed in 2007, Karen has achieved a great deal. In particular, she has set a clear direction, focusing professionals on rehabilitation and reablement as critical elements of the NHS agenda. She has raised the profile of the contribution professionals can make in transforming health and social care. For example, she was instrumental in setting up the service improvement program and designed and, and promoted the Allied Health Professionals Leadership Challenges, showcasing best skills and attributes. Both initiatives have helped to drive up standards of patient care while increasing the confidence of Allied Health Professionals in the value of their roles. Before taking up her current post, from 2003, Karen was Health Professions Advisor at the Department of Health with responsibility for children and primary care. During this period, she completed her Master's in Consultation and the Organisation, a psychoanalytical approach, as well as taking the European Leadership Programme at the Ancied Business School in France. Karen began her career as a physiotherapist, qualifying in 1985 and going on to specialise in musculoskeletal therapy. She became a Fellow of the Society of Orthopaedic Medicine in 1994 and has taught at undergraduate and postgraduate levels in orthopaedic medicine and hydrotherapy. Subsequently, Karen held a range of posts across the allied health professions. This experience honed her management skills and shaped her commitment to client-centered care. For example, in the mid-1990s, she managed a large user consultation project in Tower Hamlets and went on to develop the disability options team an interdisciplinary service for people with physical disabilities which gained national recognition. People's positive stories convinced her of the benefits of such approaches and she takes every opportunity, including conferences and her blog, to encourage allied health professionals to collaborate and share best practice. She has recently urged them to work together in the new commissioning environment to communicate their value and influence to GP consortia. 
In liaising with government, the AHP network, and professional bodies, Karen maintains a high-profile presence involving speaking engagements around the country. However, she still finds time in her busy schedule to focus on her personal fitness and well-being. As a member of the steering group of the NHS 2012 Sport and Physical Activity Challenge, she literally walks a talk by exercising as part of her routine both at work and at home. Living locally in Hertfordshire, Karen has been an active supporter of our School of Health and Emergency Professions. At the launch of the school's postgraduate framework in 2008, she gave the keynote speech welcoming our, in our interprofessional agendas and flexible approach to career development. Since then, she has generously given her time to present lectures on leading and developing services, which have both inspired and challenged our students to think differently. As an acknowledgement of her significant contribution to healthcare, Karen was awarded a CBE in the Queen's Birthday Honours this year. Karen is an articulate and visionary champion of allied health professionals and the services they provide, and it is a privilege to pay tribute to her achievements. Karen is an excellent role model for our graduates here today. Vice-Chancellor, in recognition of this, and her close association with the university, I would ask you to confer an honorary Doctor of Science on Karen Middleton, CBE. I now call upon Dr. Middleton to address the Assembly. Vice-Chancellor, graduates and guests, I am honoured to receive this award and I offer my sincerest thanks to the University. It is a particular pleasure to receive such an award from the University of Hertfordshire as it's my local university and I have done numerous pieces of work here. I have the highest regard for your work. At moments like these, a time of reflection is important. I want to speak to those of you who are just embarking on careers, and particularly to the clinicians here today. When I qualified as a physiotherapist hundreds of years ago, one's career was mapped out. I knew what I would be doing by when. This was pretty much the pattern for most clinicians in the 80s. In these uncertain times, you might be envious of such certainty and security, but there was a downside. It bred, in my opinion, a degree of complacency and self-interest. I went into the profession to make a difference to others and their lives, but over time, the vocation diminished and yet my career flourished. I think I had forgotten the term service, and the, content, the context in which I was working allowed this to happen. The very paternalistic doctor knows best approach to healthcare then allowed us clinicians to ensure our own needs were met and if they happened to coincide with those of patients, all well and good. The turning point for me was the opportunity to lead a user-informed consultation which was essentially about designing a service for people with severe physical disabilities based on what they told me they wanted and needed. The stories and insights people shared with me then had a profound effect and no matter what post I have held since, I always have in mind what those people said to me. One of the most important lessons I learned is that often what clinicians pay least attention to is what matters most to patients. The public assume our clinical competence to deliver health care in the same way when we fly we assume the pilot is qualified to fly the plane. What we must also focus our attention on is how we deliver care. We must demonstrate professionalism 24-7. Being a healthcare professional, as many of you soon will be, means delivering high quality care in terms of safety, clinical effectiveness and patient experience. People need to feel your care and compassion. They need information to make informed choices. It is about delivering a service which, after all, the public is paying for. 
And on the subject of money, being a professional is also about ensuring our services are good value for money and are efficient. We as clinicians can no longer abdicate this responsibility and conveniently lo locate it with the finance director. We have to take responsibility too. After all, 70% of the NHS budget is spent on our salaries and every pound we waste is a pound lost from good quality clinical care. Remember, it is a privilege to serve, particularly when people you are serving are at their most vulnerable. Remember why you came into the profession you have and don't get complacent. Much of what I've described about professionalism relates to leadership. The difference between management and leadership is that management is doing things right and leadership is doing the right thing. Leadership is not about hierarchy or your position. It's about a set of behavior, behaviours that you exhibit. Leadership is about modelling the behaviour you want to see in others. It's about allowing innovation, which will inevitably be disruptive. And it's about challenging one's own and others' lack of professionalism. This takes courage. We have seen and heard all too often the horrors of what happens when complacency creeps in of how a lack of compassion can become the norm and what happens when unprofessional behaviour goes unchallenged, when clinicians don't have the courage to say what really needs to be said. The uncertain world that you embark on your careers in requires all of us to reflect on what true service means, to understand our responsibilities as professionals and to have the courage as clinical leaders to stand up for not what is necessarily in our best interest, but for what is right. Thank you once again for bestowing on me this honour. We shall now receive the graduates of the School of Health and Emergency Professions and School of Psychology. Candidates are presented by a senior member of academic staff from their school. I first call upon Dr. John Doan. Faculty of Health and Human Sciences, Doctor of Philosophy. Lindsay Doan Hughes has been awarded the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in recognition of a program of work entitled Psychological Adjustment to the Onset of Rheumatoid Arthritis a longitudinal evaluation of perceptions of and adherence to medication. Vice-Chancellor, Dr. Lindsay Dawn Hughes. The Doctor of Philosophy. Kareem Lewis has been awarded the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in recognition of a programme of research entitled The Relationship between improvisation and cognition. Vice-Chancellor, Dr. Corrine Lewis. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy, Samuel Norton has been awarded the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in recognition of a program of work entitled The Course of Psychological Distress and Determinants of Adjustment following diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis. Vice-Chancellor, Dr. Samuel Norton. <laughs> Doctor of Clinical Psychology, Thomas William Allen has been awarded the degree of Doctor of Clinical Psychology in recognition of a program of work entitled What Works For Me? The Impact of the Combination Between Personal Style and therapeutic orientation on a client's experience of therapy. Vice-Chancellor, Dr. Thomas William Allen. Doctor of Clinical Psychology. Lisa Brosh has been awarded the degree of Doctor of Clinical Psychology in recognition of a programme of work entitled Narrative of Living with Epilepsy Diagnosed in Adulthood. Vice-Chancellor, Dr. Lisa Brosh. Doctor of Clinical Psychology, 
Laura Elizabeth Casali has been awarded the degree of Doctor of Clinical Psychology in recognition of a program of work entitled The Impact of the Antenatal Class Baby World on the Caregiver-Infant Relationship, a pilot study. Vice-Chancellor, Dr. Laura Elizabeth Casali. Doctor of Clinical Psychology, Joanne Margaret Coxey has been awarded a degree of Doctor of Clinical Psychology in recognition of a program of work entitled Contextual Factors Associated with Psychological Inflexibility and Distress in Adults. Vice-Chancellor, Dr. Joanne Margaret Coxey. Doctor of Clinical Psychology, Emily Beth Cooper has been awarded the degree of Doctor of Clinical Psychology in recognition of a program of work entitled Exploring the Personal Constructs of Looked After Children and Their Foster Carers, a Qualitative Study. Vice-Chancellor, Dr. Emily Beth Cooper. Doctor of Clinical Psychology, Rebecca Lara Davies has been awarded the degree of Doctor of Clinical Psychology in recognition of a program of work entitled Narrative Accounts of Family Caregivers of Adults Diagnosed with Non-Epileptic Attack Disorder. Vice-Chancellor, Dr. Rebecca Lara Davies. Doctor of Clinical Psychology, Anna K. Disney has been awarded the degree of Doctor of Clinical Psychology in recognition of a program of work entitled A Narrative Ethnography, Stories from Within and Beyond a Tree of Life Group. Vice-Chancellor, Dr. Anna K. Disney. Doctor of Clinical Psychology, Amy Crystal Duncan has been awarded the degree of Doctor of Clinical Psychology in recognition of a program of work entitled Intra and Interpersonal Factors in the Use of Personal Therapy by Trainee Clinical Psychologists. Vice-Chancellor, Dr. Amy Crystal Duncan. Doctor of Clinical Psychology, Melody Jane Hodgkinson has been awarded the degree of Doctor of Clinical Psychology in recognition of a program of work entitled the, Experience, the Experiences of People Whose Partners Have Taken Their Own Lives, an Interpretative Phenomenological Analysis. Vice-Chancellor, Dr. Melanie Jane Hodgkinson. Doctor of Clinical Psychology, Leah Rebecca Hull has been awarded the degree Doctor of Clinical Psychology in recognition of a program of work entitled The Experiences of Primary Caregivers of People with Learning Disabilities Who Have Committed an Offence, a Narrative Study. Vice-Chancellor, Dr. Leah Rebecca Hull. Doctor of Clinical Psychology. Jonathan Hutchins has been awarded the degree of Doctor of Clinical Psychology in recognition of a program of work entitled The Role of Emotion in the Development and Maintenance of Psychoses, a Qualitative Study. Vice-Chancellor, Dr. Jonathan Hutchins. Doctor of Clinical Psychology. Sarah Gemma McLean has been awarded the degree of Doctor of Clinical Psychology in recognition of a program of work entitled Personal Constructs and Adjustment in Secondary Hypothyroidism. Vice-Chancellor, Dr. Sarah Gemma McLean.
Doctor of Clinical Psychology, Catherine Ruth Marshall, has been awarded the degree of Doctor of Clinical Psychology in recognition of a program of work entitled Coping with Hearing Voices, a Repertory Grid Study. Vice-Chancellor, Dr. Catherine Ruth Marshall. <clears throat> Doctor of Clinical Psychology, Nerman Tulay Murad has been awarded the degree of Doctor of Clinical Psychology in recognition of a program of work entitled Invisible Diversity, exploring the experiences of trainee clinical psychologists from a mixed white ethnic background. Vice Chancellor, Dr. Nerman Tulay Murad. Doctor of Clinical Psychology, Fiona Patterson has been awarded the degree of Doctor of Clinical Psychology in recognition of a program of work entitled Personal Constructs of Adolescents with Selective Mutism. Vice Chancellor, Dr. Fiona Patterson. <laughs> Doctor of Clinical Psychology, Helen Westbury has been awarded the degree of Doctor of Clinical Psychology in recognition of a program of work entitled Young Persons Constructions Prior to and Following Parental Brain Injury. Vice Chancellor, Dr. Helen Westbury. <laughs> Doctor of Clinical Psychology. Amani Zarug has been awarded the degree of Doctor of Clinical Psychology in recognition of a program of work entitled The Construal of Romantic Relationships in Transgendered People, a Personal Construct Approach. Vice Chancellor, Dr. Amani Zarug. School of Health and Emergency Professions, Bachelor of Science degree in Diagnostic Radiography and Imaging, Winston Aberys. <laughs> Kaviraj Achadu. <laughs> Charles Adulabi. Ayan Ahmed. <laughs> Yusuf Ajabadi Ajaga Abdullahi. <laughs> Damia Sheikha Al Jabir. <laughs> With first class honours, Moses Mwamba Banda. Shorbo Nuri Bapia. Rajni Kaur Baj. Zoe Emma Bright. With first class honours, Helen Jane Brown. With first class honours, Laura Jane Brown. <laughs> Hannah Maud Cardwell. <laughs> Dinia Susan Chibway. <laughs> Veronica Chizirimunu. With first class honours, Kudzai Chiwariza. <laughs> Corin 
Leona Christian. With first class honours, Adam Lee Craddock. Tom D'Angelo. Victoria Louise Davis. Alison Thelma Doolan. With first class honours, Claire Dunning. Teresa Jane Field Simmons. With first class honours, Teresa Flatley. With first class honours, Janine Flood. With first class honours and winner of a university prize, Claire Louise Gordon. <laughs> Sally Jean Goff. <laughs> Thomas Matthew Guanier. <laughs> Bruce Guanguadza. James Sheridan Hancock. Abra Halawani. Joanna Binti Jamaludin. Rangano Jaravaza. Laura Joy. Lillian Padamoyo Katiza. Colette Keown. Lisa Lazarus. Hazel Marissa Madden. <laughs> Jennifer Ann Christine Massey. <laughs> Tracy Mbeki. <laughs> Vidya Mahanasundaram. Teodora Madalena Muntano. <laughs> Eva Patricia Murphy. <laughs> Lauren Victoria Murphy. <laughs> Lisa Margaret Murphy. Natalie Nadulovo. <laughs> Vera Agupoma Naketia. <laughs> Naomi Natanganika. <laughs> Marion Bernadette O'Sullivan. Kadimma Virginia Obinquo. <laughs> Dawson Meave Parminta. <laughs> Rosie Parrish. <laughs> Alicia Bashka Patney.
Anna Pulaska. Brianne Elizabeth Price. Jack Kevin Pryor. With first class honours, Katya Sayazde. Bhavni Naresh Shah. Matthew William Short. Fahima Siddiqui. Alexandra Lauren Singleton. Tupton Sonnen. Shiromi Sarithran. Mirwan Sultani. Benjamin James Thorne. Kaylee Tomset. Raphael Blaise Tuko Chichetu. Zara Amelia Waterfall. <laughs> Stephanie Maria Williams. <laughs> Christopher Ian Willescroft. <laughs> Mark Wright. Zulkanan Amar Yunus. <laughs> Bachelor of Science degree in Radiotherapy and Oncology. With first class honours, Stacey Nicole Berridge. <laughs> Kiana Mary Brennan. Alexander Robert Kane. Danielle Maria Dunn. Amanda Bridget Feely. <coughs> Catherine Jane Hale. With first class honours and winner of a university prize, Anna Catherine Jackson. <laughs> Umi Mariam Jallo. <laughs> Oluwashe Oluwashon Temitopi Jeno. <laughs> Peter Kelsey. With first class honours, Eriklia Sandra Malabianaki. <laughs> Millicent Ajay Mensa. <laughs> With first class honours, Natasha Bianca Katerina Maruzzi. <laughs> Latifa Nori. Bupinda Kaur Talwa. John Terence Tenney. With first class honours, Irene Wakahayu. Tara Marie White. Julie Marie Wyatt.
Bachelor of Science degree in Paramedic Science, Sophie Camilla Benson. Kate Elizabeth Clark. <laughs> Helen Ruth Clements. <laughs> Sarah Catherine Davidovich. <laughs> Lauren Elizabeth Davidson. Martin John Davis. <laughs> Benjamin Thomas Fussell. <laughs> Toby Nicholas Gilbert. <laughs> With first class honours, Jenny Lee Hall. Natasha Hall. <laughs> Kirsten Louise Harper. <laughs> With first class honours and winner of a university prize, Megan Joy Hines. <laughs> Lauren Karen Cooper. Lewis Ashley Richard Johnson. <laughs> Kate Francesca Lewin. <laughs> Bryony Louise Lysett Brown. <laughs> Matthew Paul Morris. Faye Jacqueline O'Keefe. <laughs> Rachel Amy Parkinson. <laughs> Rose Megan Pescod. <laughs> Charlotte Louise Prescott. Rachel Ellen Price. <laughs> Timothy Carl Rimosa. <laughs> Claire Saunders. <laughs> Emma Jane Tomlinson. With first class honours, Charlotte Rachel Wright. <laughs> Bachelor of Science degree in Paramedic Science with Emergency Care Practice. With first class honours, Stephen Michael Barber. <laughs> Richard Carter. Timothy John Daniels. <laughs> Emma Louise Deersley. <laughs> Jason Robert George. <laughs> David Gordino. Ian Rory McIntyre. <laughs> Martin David Mist. <laughs> Romana Diane Scotson. <laughs> Evion Win Reese Thomas. Foundation degree, science, in paramedic science. Roxanne Adams. <laughs> Sarah.
Sarah Louise Brown. Matthew Peter Cooper. With distinction and winner of a university prize, Lawrence Brian Cowdroy. <laughs> Haley Louise Grattan. <laughs> With distinction, Thomas Jack Hazelwood. <laughs> Nicola Jenkins. Jody Louise Kemp. <laughs> Helen Ruth Marcroft. <laughs> Joanne Mary Plant. <laughs> Nathan Pollard. James Edward Porter. <laughs> Jodine Denise Ransom. <laughs> Elizabeth Claire Scan. <laughs> Joshua Simon Smith. <laughs> Dominic Anthony Stark. <laughs> Daniel John Trimmer. <laughs> Megan Latricia Warrington. <laughs> Emily Claire Elizabeth Ragg. Bachelor of Science degree in Physiotherapy, Aziz Olusagan Ajibola. <laughs> Matthew Graham Barnaby. <laughs> Jessica Helen Bell. <laughs> With first class honours, Talia Ronit Benharash. Abida Chowdhury. <laughs> Sophie Christmas. <laughs> With first class honours, Claire Bernadette Curtin. <laughs> With first class honours, Rebecca Julia East O'Keefe. With first class honours, Matthew James Ellis. With first class honours, Reese Jeffrey Fitz. Thomas Scott Flint. Chris Forsdyke. Ashley Christopher Fowler. <laughs> Nia Gort. <laughs> With first class honours and winner of a university prize, Patrick Gilman. <laughs> Lauren Jade Healy. With first class honours and winner of the Heather Coates Prize, Iona Jane Holland. <laughs> Nilam Afshar Hussain. <laughs> Samantha Hannah Laws.
Emma Alexandra Hamilton Lennox. With first class honours, Michelle Christine Maguire. Kudzia Sultana Malik. Christopher Thomas McCarthy. Aaron Hugh O'Neill. Ashley Page. With first class honours, Sarah Jane Pearson. Sophie Ann Perio. <laughs> Natalie Kim Phillips. <laughs> Leslie Dominic Richards. <laughs> Danielle Laura Rubery. <clears throat> With first class honours, Guy Nicholas Sherwin. <clears throat> Nihit Shrestha. <clears throat> Deborah Francis Sim. <clears throat> Kim Spark. Jennifer Kate Staley. <laughs> Hannah Joanne Stanford. <laughs> With first class honours, Alexander James Tarrant. <laughs> Sushma Thapa. Joseph George Thompson. <laughs> Jamila Tomlinson. <laughs> Pooja Vasani. <laughs> Suzanne Famark. Bachelor of Science degree in Dietetics, Helen Margaret Aylesbury. <clears throat> Rekha Begum. <clears throat> With first class honours, Samantha Louisa Brown. <clears throat> Kirsten June Crothers. Emma Charlotte Davy, <clears throat> with first class honours, Joanne Everett, <clears throat> with first class honours, Laura Ford, <clears throat> with first class honours, Joanna Caroline Gray. Neve Mary Hoban. With first class honours, Elizabeth Isla Hopkins. Nina Elizabeth Janati. Rishi Jantilal Kanabar. Andrea Carol Kingsmill. <clears throat> Felicia Gillian Luisi. <clears throat> Joy Anita Morris. 
with First Class Honours, Lloyd John F. Parker. Sarah Jane Percy. Callum Russell Rule. Helen Louise Scott. Saha Shah. Sarah Ann Stammers. With first class honours and winner of a university prize, Ellen Amelia F. Wilbur. Christina Git Ying Yao. School of Psychology, Bachelor of Science degree in Psychology, Jamal Ali. Ross Allard. <laughs> Eunice Ama Amoa. <laughs> Jessica Louise Andrews. <laughs> Jamie Carl Anarobi. Dolores Nadine Aquilina. <laughs> Sophie Caroline Ashton. <laughs> Jessica Hayden Atkinson. <laughs> Aminda Babra. Vanessa Bakery. <laughs> Cindy Banjoko. <laughs> Jennifer Susan Bebbington. <laughs> Natalie Jane Beglan. Avisha Harish Banderi. <laughs> Priya Bihal. <laughs> Katie Louise Boswell. <laughs> Hannah Rose Bowers. Sarah Louise Brocklebank. <laughs> Alexandra Burfoot. <laughs> Kellyanne Burnham. <laughs> Coral Emily Busby. Michelle Butcher. <laughs> Emma Louise Byers. <laughs> Natasha Rose Carhill. <laughs> Ross Keith Cameron. Tony Sarah May Cantle. <laughs> Gemma Rosen Carter. <laughs> Stephanie Helen Casey. <laughs> With first class honours and winner of the British Psychological Society Undergraduate Award, Kaylee Louise Chester. Louise Colleen Cummins. <laughs> Hannah Darling. <laughs> K. 
Kelly Alice Dean. Eustina Dimitri. Louisa Ellen Jane Donald. Dunya Dudu. Rebecca Claire Edwards. Nicholas David Stewart Eliasson. With first class honours, Louise Robin Ellis. Louise Ellen Exley. Ayn Fulham. Shadia Aza Unisa Gafur. Charlotte Vincina Gideon Powell. Erica Carolina Goncalves Andrade. Leah Fiona Graham. With first class honours, Rebecca Ann Hadley. Gemma Louise Haynes. Laura Kate Hamilton. Mabubul Hassan. Zoe Henman. Tanya Caroline Hill. Wei Hyun Hung. Jasmine Andrea Howard. Callie Sylvia Humphreys. Zumru Irki. With first class honours and winner of the University Prize, Sarah Jane Jackson. <laughs> Bianca Rochelle Johnson Wedderburn. <laughs> Caroline Capenzi. <laughs> Janet Kasumu. Jaswinder Kawa. Sidra Khan. With first class honours, Madeline Louise King. With first class honours, Katia Amelia Covius. Dylan Kurt. Beatrice Natalie Larty. E. Lau. Ebony Alicia Lawrence. Camilla Devi Lochan. <laughs> Jessica Louise Lovett. <laughs> Jonathan Paul Lynch. <laughs> Artie Magithia. Chelsea Florence Maskell. (Applause) 
Daniel James McCoy. Lucy Amber McGowan. Tina Mehta. Victoria Kim Mellish. Edlira Michal. Usman Mohammed. Joshua Munn. Lorena Josephine Nash. Grace Diana Nasanga Abuli. Charmaine Ayuko Nelson Wilson. Kehindi Gabimi Ogun. Rachel Adiambo Okulu. Victoria Adeli. <laughs> Margaret Alawumi Layunu Oladimeji. <laughs> Hannah O'Leary. <laughs> Jinal Patel. Pavandeep Singh Paul. <laughs> Amy Elizabeth Tracy Payne. <laughs> Arti Sunil Pisavadia. <laughs> Lee Christina Perling. Anam Qureshi. <laughs> Samira Khalid Raja. <laughs> Daisy Rankin. <laughs> With first class honours, Sarah Rees. With first class honours, Amy Jade Cayley Reed. <laughs> Zoe Amma Renner. <laughs> Samantha Jade Roscoe. <laughs> Priya Sanger. Tia Shah. <laughs> Nalim Sharif. <laughs> Serena Sharma. <laughs> Yasmin Shevket. Cassie Adele Simpkins. <laughs> Jessica Louise Simpson Titmarsh. <laughs> Elena Louise Solomon. <laughs> Rebecca Elizabeth Swan. Laura Tejo Tan. <laughs> Elizabeth Jane Tanton. <laughs> Tony Thayanandan. <laughs> With first class honours, Abby Thomas.
Christina Thomas. Rachel Sabrina Thomas. Georgia Lee Thurban. Lamara Nadine Tillock. Lauren Stephanie Titchmarsh. Mun Young To. Christina Delia Nicola Varnava. Nilani Vasantharasan. Candy Louise Vincent. Charlotte Anne Marie Wade. With first class honours, Lisa Wheatley. Deanna Mary Jane Williams. Jackson Moore Ray. With first class honours, Holly Samantha Wright. Kieran Kamal Yousaf. That concludes the presentation of awards. I now have pleasure in calling upon Moses Banda to address the assembly on behalf of the graduates. Um, Vice Chancellor, academics, honored guests, graduates, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great honor to speak on behalf of fellow graduates today. I cannot believe the three years are up. It feels like just yesterday when barely we had no idea of what was expected of us, but here we are now, reaping the fruits of our hard work and mentoring we received from the lecturers and staff of our respective departments. Most of us here, I believe today, have experienced the excitement and trepidation about entering professional practice in an evolving NHS environment. The feeling of being recognized by your professional registration council as a practicing professional of good character. No doubt the training and guidance we have had throughout our time at the University of Hertfordshire had, has equipped us sufficiently with the skills to deal with any challenges that lie ahead. But what made you where you are now after those years at the University of Hertfordshire? is a question worth considering before your mind leaves the university for the next chapter in your life. Did the university succeed in molding you first as a good-hearted man or woman before you were crafted as a pro prospective professional? Yes would be my answer. Have you ever thought that your university has played a great role, not only in equipping you with skills and knowledge of a respectable health professional, but more importantly, with instilling formative values and scholarly disciplines that make you better. Men and women would be better prepared to face life's realities, would be concerned with the development of national priorities and global awareness in the service of people. The university and its noble task of promoting education played a great part and continues to do so. Its goal of advancing such a task has not wavered despite the complex events that have affected the UK in the recent past. We are all thankful that the university has honed us to become globally competitive health professionals and at the same time molded us as 
men and women who would make our country proud in whichever field we may practice. Words alone can, cannot express how thankful we all are to the university. Thank you to the Vice Chancellor for receiving the graduates this morning. Thank you to all our lecturers who have educated and supported us throughout the process of obtaining a degree and a profession. Last but not least, thank you to our loving families and friends who have given us their unwavering support and encouragement. We could not have accomplished this without you. We will make you all proud. My fellow graduates, we all have a very important role to play in health service, and we must ensure that our practice makes a difference. Mahatma Gandhi said, be the change you want to be to see in the world. I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate and wish us all the very best for the future. Thank you. Moses, thank you very much for those kind words. Uh, it now rests to me to conclude the, the ceremony this morning. Um, and I want to do so really by uh, uh, focusing on what a fantastic celebration it's been. But hasn't it been such an extraordinary year for celebration? We began the year, some of you may remember, and the weather wasn't much different than it was yesterday with that wonderful uh, 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 pageant on the River Thames to celebrate Her Majesty's Diamond Jubilee. Wasn't that a fabulous event? And then, of course, the, the great celebration in front of Buckingham Palace. We then, of course, had uh, Bradley Wiggins winning the Tour de France. What a fantastic achievement. Did anyone think a Briton would win the Tour de France in our lifetime? I, I, I don't think so. Then we nearly, we nearly had a Scottish win at Wimbledon. <laughs> Then there was that marvelous Olympics. Now, I have to say, it may, I'm, I'm sure it certainly made me extraordinarily proud to be British. I'm sure it did all of you also. Um, the, the, the fact that we held such a wonderful event, uh, our volunteers were just outstanding, the facilities were truly spectacular in the center of London and, and surrounding, and of course, out here in Hertfordshire, where we had the canoe slalom, and of course, um, uh, was it Scott and Bailey won the, 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 the double um, slalom there? Fantastic achievements. Um, a really f superb cause for celebration, and of course the Paralympics as well. Then of course, and I have to put this in, our Scotsman eventually got there. The, uh, the US Open, we won that. And then the Ryder Cup for, for Europe. Terrific summer of celebration, culminating for you our graduates today in what I think has been a fabulous celebration in here in, the, in, in this wonderful Abbey Cathedral. Um, I'd like uh, in a moment to congratulate them really on my behalf for the last time, but before doing so, I'd like to congratulate all your mums and dads, your supporters, your helpers, those who have helped to get you here today, both, and I'm going to ask you if you'll join me in a second to celebrate with me. But those in front of me in the nave, but also, can I say, those behind me, my colleagues who have put a huge amount of effort into helping get you here today. So can I ask you to help me and celebrate these people today? Thank you very much. And now for our graduates, a last thought. Um, I mean, we clearly want you to go forward, have great dreams, and achieve the wonderful things that you have in those, in those dreams. I want every single one of you to, to, to get out of life exactly what you want out of life. You have to put effort in to get that, but please go out and do that. I also want some of you to become fabulously wealthy and when you do become fabulously wealthy, I want you to remember the University of Hertfordshire. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, can I ask you to join with me in congratulating our graduates once again on a fabulous achievement.
Could I ask you now to be upstanding as the academic procession leaves?